Hello and welcome to the second part of this tutorial. Today we'll be going over the file input, the gradient, the radio grad and a Voronoi. So let's start with the file input. The file input is basically basically a input which gives files. So for instance we're going to use this height map. Any height map will work. You can just search height maps on Google Images and any of these will work. Because the definition of a height map is like I uh, said in my previous tutorial, white is high and black is low. For this test one, we can simply render it out and get a result. We can also use a file input for interpreted as RHB as a color. So if we use the image as the RGB and simply do an overlay output, we have a train with some colors. As you can see, it is not properly working since I have scaled this train to 12.6992. I'm going to copy that and paste it there. Uh -huh. If it's okay, it will probably, yeah. So now we've got a color map and a height map combined in an overlay view. So we can see how it looks with colors. In the file input you can do quick scaling. You can set your terrain to a different uh, starting value. And also other sorts of things. I don't really use the file input but it comes in really handy if you import uh, height maps into World Machine such as C brushes or uh, from World Painter to Quilt Machine. Next on the list is a gradient, which is a fairly simple one. Same for the constants. It makes a gradient in the direction you tell it to. The origin lies uh, at four kilometers and four kilometers, which is uh, the center of the map at the moment. As you can see is the, the width is 8 kilometers so that means that on the left side here is the lowest point and on the right side it's the highest point possible. If we increase this you can see that the terrain will shift to a less steep version of itself and if we decrease it you'll see that it will become steep and steeper. The range is from 0 to 2656 meters and anything in between will create a slope vertical. There are multiple options such as linear and disconscious. If we use linear it will generate a spike type terrain which repeats the gradients, mirrors it and then does the same trick all over. You can also change the direction of the, these ones for some cool effects. This conscious is a type of gradient which I'm not really sure where any of uh, any use is. As you can see the terrain the gradient goes up goes up goes up then just stops all of a sudden and then starts from zero. Uh, that would be the gradient device, so I'll move on to the radial grad. The radial grad is nothing more than a spike, a spherical Gaussian diamond. It's 
software or the column generator. You can also change the origin of the sensor by increasing or decreasing the X and Y values and you can change the radius of your chosen type by simply going up and down. Then last but not least we've got a Foranoi which is a pretty awesome generator and which has been uh, pretty useful in any of my trains. You can also for this set the origin of the train to something you like. For the sake of this tutorial I'll just keep it to 4 and 4. You can increase the scale and decrease it of course. You can ha you have tons of styles. I'm going to preview a couple of them. You can experiment with them yourselves. So for instance F1 are these ones. F4 is a combination of all of them which looks kind of like this. Then you've got F2 minus F1 which gives a nice boulder effect. In this one you have also some vari variations. Going to the funky ones, the cells are these ones. The distance function is also something interesting. You have four options, Euclidean, Manhattan, alternate one, alternate two. You can see for yourself in the top left how they work with some variations. I usually don't play a lot with these distance functions because I mainly get the, the output I want just based on the style. You can change the shape. This is basically the same as a random seed from an advanced furling or the seed from a basic noise. Also here is a mask option, but also a more hidden tool and that is distortion enable. If we enable the distortion, a input will occur, which has the same effect as a distortion guide on an advanced spoiling. If we just combine uh, combine a regular a default advanced spoiling with the distortion map, nothing happens. But we can change the distortion amount on the bottom here, and you can see that the terrain shifts to one side. We can change the direction by simply sliding this up and down, and we can change the random seed just by clicking on randomize. Especially if used correct with F4, it can give some nice mountain shapes and some pretty cool basic features. features. Those were all the generators. I hope to see you around for the filters, the naturals and some outputs and selectors. And I'll see you the next time.